Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Triumph. And it seems like I've not been here for a while, but I'm stood next to Steve Sargent. And I'm stood in front of a bike that seems like it's been coming for a couple of years now, which is the new Triumph TE1. So this is your electric testbed prototype. And you're going to tell me everything that I need and the viewers at home need to know about this new model. First and foremost, this does not look like any prototype test mule that I've ever seen. There's no gaffer tape holding it together. It's not got cable ties everywhere that you look. It looks, you know, pretty close to what a production bike would look like. And the style is instantly a triumph. A lot of manufacturers, when they're developing something all new like this, they'll hide it away and it'll be covered in camouflage. You've not done that. Are you happy with how it looks? You're right. I mean, a lot of people, when they're developing a bike that is for development or for learning effectively, you know, might do something that is uh, a little bit more Heath Robinson, shall yeah. we say. Um, but what we really wanted to do here was to um, show people what an electric vehicle, what an electric motorcycle could be, what it could look like. Mm -hmm. um, and an important part of that to us is to make it look like a Triumph. You know, what we've come up with here is a performance naked bike. Quite clearly, we do bikes in that category already. So we've got the speeds and the street triples, very well loved, respected bikes. We wanted to make this naked bike look like it fits in that family. In terms of styling cues, there may be a lot of things on here that are familiar. Obviously, the aluminium styled frame, you've got the single side swing on there, you've got the aggressive tank on there, you've got the, you know, the signature headlights, all that good yeah. stuff. So it does absolutely look like a finished naked electric vehicle, even though it's only a prototype. It's really, really impressive. I mean, you take the headlight out of the equation, the stance of the bike and with that, that frame, you know, it's not exactly the same as any of the model in the Triumph family, obviously, but it is instantly recognizable as, as one of your frames, which is quite impressive. We spoke to you uh, a while ago now, we came up to the factory visitor experience and we saw the, the battery controllers and the motor. And you told us then what sort of specification you were shooting for in terms of range, torque, recharge, mm. yep. all the rest of it. Yep. How have you done and are you happy with all the results that you got in your testing? We've done pretty good in terms of delivering what we were trying to achieve out of bike. So, you know, we've got great performance out of the motor. So we've got a 130 kilowatts power, so that's about 177 PS. So, yep. you know, we went out to try and replicate the performance of a speed triple. So that's pretty much spot on mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that. Obviously, in terms of acceleration, it's slightly different from how it performs, you know, with a speed triple. but. In terms of out and out power we've got there in terms of range we've got 100 miles real world range you know that's a combination of a bit of city riding some a roads some motorway so you know there's a lot of claims out there in terms of what people say their electric vehicles will do mm -hmm. um i think you have to be a little bit cautious with some of that but in terms of this bike you've got 100 miles real world range and then you know, we've got genuinely class leading recharge time. So you can go from zero to 80% charge in 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, that kind of um, anxiety they have about having an electric vehicle, how long am I going to have to park up? You know, am I going to have to have three coffees or just one coffee whilst it's charging? Well, you know, with this bike, one coffee and a quick chat with your mates, and then you can be back on the road. I mean, you say that, but with this bike, not with this bike though, Basically, this bike is trying to learning about electric electric vehicles Correct. and EVs. But I mean, looking forwards then, so this is the prototype, this is the development bike. You've done a shed load of, of testing and development work with it. You know, looking further down the line, you, you don't just build bikes for fun like this and then not sell any. When is the Triumph Electric coming? I know you've just acquired Osset, you've got the, the Enduro bikes coming in, you've got a lot of different strands in the business and this is looking like it's gonna be the next one, is an electric road bike. When is that coming? And when are you starting it? So we already have a team working on our first electric road bike products. Mm -hmm. So it, it won't be this bike, as you say. This is where we've gained all of our understanding. We've gained an awful lot of knowledge about, you know, battery man management, about, you know, um, the integration of the batteries and the motors and the, uh, the whole management software side of it. We've learned a lot of information about the regen braking and what you can do with that. Of course, because that's all um, totally new to you. Isn't so that's all totally new to us. And that's all stuff that is transferable onto other electric bike products. So we are starting to work on our road bikes. The offset side of things, that plays more into our off-road strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what we are starting to see that in terms of uh, small electric bikes, a lot of families feel a lot more comfortable with their kids getting onto an electric bike as their starting point rather than, you know, something that is a petrol engine bike that maybe they're, you know, a little bit more worried about their kids riding around on. So, mm. you know, Osset have done a great job over the years in terms of developing their brand, 
developing a great range of products. I mean, I don't know if you've had a go on one, but the, oh, yes. the, 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 big, the bigger wheel ones are great fun, you know, for, you know, forget about kids' bikes, even for adults, these yeah. are great bikes, right? We're gonna be working with Offset to help them to develop their range. Obviously, there's a lot of things that we can bring to the table that will help Offset. Mm -hmm. um, they will continue to stand alone as their own Offset brand. Right, okay. um, but then we will also work with Offset, taking on board what they've learned about electric vehicles to help us develop some of our electric vehicles going forward. Please, just do me one thing. Please, I beg you. Don't use this as your development test bike and then launch a small scale, small capacity, 125cc equivalent scooter. Because it would probably be the last time that you ever spoke to me. That's all I'm saying. It's got to be a proper triumph. It's got to be a, a super naked, a middleweight naked, something along those lines. Well, give, give me some hope. So I think, you know, as, as a brand, we, we don't develop kind of utilitarian products and we don't do something that is just, you know, um, a standard commuter bike. For, for us, Triumph has always got to be something that's got some emotion to it. Yeah. It's got to have some style to it. You know, it's got to, you know, get your heart going a little bit. So will we be developing, you know, a scooter for going down the shops on with a basket on the front? No. Uh, all I needed to hear. Will we be developing something that you'll probably, you know, have a bit of fun on? Yeah, I'd hope so. On this bike, you've got elements from Williams, Advanced Engineering, F1 team, Formula E team as well. There's Integral Powertrain as well, doing the motor. You've got WMG at Warwick Uni. So are they all going to be on board on the official road going Triumph Electric bike? Or is that is is it kind of you've got the the, the knowledge and the know-how and you're going to go out on your own and, and develop those elements? So th this bike was mostly about developing the knowledge and the know-how. So when you get down to trying to get something into volume production. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you're trying to hit a price point that customers are willing to pay. Mm -hmm. So your supply chain decisions are slightly different between developing a volume production product and developing a one-off prototype. Mm -hmm. So say so this bike is all about developing the knowledge, the understanding, um, you know, it's helped us an awful lot to develop um, simulation software that we can use. It's helped us an awful lot to develop vehicle management software that we can use. Yeah. Um, but in terms of who might the suppliers be on future volume products, then you know that that'll be determined as we go through. As you go along. Finally, I, I know everybody knows electric, you know EVs, two wheel and four wheel. That's where the push is, right? That's where we're being told that we need to be looking. We've already seen that Formula One are committing to carbon neutral fuels by a certain date. Um, Sebastian Vettel did a lap around the British GP circuit in an F1 car that had just pour in fuel, which is a, a biofuel, no, a fossil fuel job, and just poured it in the tank and it worked perfectly. You know, we're developing these amazing electric bikes. The technology is fascinating and the direction is fascinating as well. Should we be focusing on something else as well? It feels like we're putting all our eggs in the electric basket and there's a kind of this synthetic fuel argument as well that's sort of bubbling away in the background. Do you, do you pay any attention to that as a brand? Yeah, I think you've got to look at all of the different potential alternatives uh, in terms of, you know, green transportation or green power. Quite clearly to build an electric uh, motorcycle that gives you the kind of performance and range of something like a a Tiger 1200, for example. I mean, that, that's that's a challenge because the kind of range that people who do adventure bike riding want mm. is considerably higher than somebody who wants to have a thrash on a Sunday on a naked sports bike, for yeah. example. C certainly in terms of, can we get a bike to market as an electric version of everything we currently do? That's quite a challenge. So you have to look at what the alternatives are. I think, you know, there's a lot of talk around synthetic fuels. Obviously, Triumph's in Moto2. Mm -hmm. So we're part of that discussion about bringing synthetic fuels into MotoGP, Moto2, Moto3. Um, so we are certainly engaged in synthetic fuels as well as um, electric. Mm -hmm. I think where that dividing line sits will depend on the type of product that you're trying to go for. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of questions around cost and scalability of synthetic fuels, um, which I think is still unanswered. Um, there's quite clearly a lot of people still playing around with um, hydrogen combustion. Yeah. Um, whether that's feasible on a two-wheeler, again, you know, it's, something, yeah. it's yeah. something that needs to be kept in the mix, I think, mm. um, because quite clearly two-wheelers face a lot more challenges than four-wheelers do in terms of packaging the technology yeah. for a purely electric vehicle. Well, listen, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you for showing it me. Uh, look forward to seeing what the future holds for Triumph and their electric models as they as they filter down. Steve, it's been a pleasure. I will see you folks all on the next one. Cheers.